So here we go, ready to roll. This is what Cameron Indoor Stadium looks like. And I mean, you've already done this once, and we were sitting next to each other getting ready, Jay Billis, and you were like, this is weird. It is bizarre, but it's uh, it's good to be playing, and we hope we can continue to play. There are a lot of questions about that, but it is certainly a different environment that everyone has to get used to. As we are ready for our tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. Colburn wins the tip, and Frazier controls Illinois against Duke. Jordan Goldwire, the excellent defender, a senior, is guarding Desumu. That's a big assignment for Goldwire. He is not leaving him. Colburn lost the handle. He's got the freshman Williams on him. And Colburn in close, gets it to go. Boy, a beautiful drop step to the baseline side by Colburn, just a sophomore. He was in foul trouble against Baylor and was not on the floor as, as much as he needed to be. He's got to avoid those fouls in this game. I'm only going to use mountain of a man three times tonight, Jay. <laughs> the over-under was five. <laughs> Hurt here. Jumper is good, and he can do that inside and outside, and he's a little bigger, too. He's tall, and he can shoot over the top of DeMonte Williams, who's an excellent defender, just smaller. And Matthew Hurt can take you out to three-point range. He keeps the ball high, and he's got a really quick release. This is the freshman, Adam Miller. What a pass. Kick out opposite. Williams buries a three. DeMonte Williams, the son of former Illinois great Frank Williams. That was an excellent find by Adam Miller. Driving to his left, he's a left-hander. But he is a good player and can really shoot it. Nice job there by Miller of icing or downing that ball screen, not letting it get back into the middle, sending it to the baseline. Johnson put it on the floor and got that knocked away. Williams now on to Trent Frazier. Desumu. And Hurt pulls down the rebound. Here comes Duke. Desumu was almost too open there. We're looking for Colburn, had him for a second. Yeah, he was wide open, needed to get it. When he's got his defender on his back, you got to get him that deep post position. Foul on Mark Williams, his first. Take a look at this pass by Adam Miller, the freshman from Peoria. 6-3, drives in just past Colburn. And you're not supposed to leave the floor to pass, but he did so knowing that he had an outlet behind him. And that's one heck of a pass. And Williams knocks down that wide open shot, and Williams' shot has really improved. So here is Kofi Coburn. Career better than a 60% free throw shooter, but misses the first. A native of Jamaica, he goes seven feet, 285. Missed them both, and the rebound pulled down by Johnson. Illinois, the early 5-2 lead. John Chompy, Jay Billis. Stewart inside to get the foul on the floor. That'll be on Adam Miller. Yeah, Stewart doing a nice job of staying low and then get, getting right into the body of Miller and forcing that foul. Those two guys know one another for playing against each other in high school. 1-2 in Illinois, Mr. Basketball. Feed inside and Hurt got shoved. And yeah, they get the foul on DeMonte Williams. And there is Coach K. 41st season, five national titles. No coach has won more games. And nobody's won more games against top 10 teams. If Duke wins this, it'll be his 100th win over the top 10. That's really remarkable. Ted Valentine said that was a push off. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's Brad Underwood. His fourth season had a really good year last year. They haven't been to the tournament since 2013, but this guy, I mean, three years at Stephen F. Austin went to the NCAA tournament every year. One year at Oklahoma State went to the tournament. And he's close to 50 pounds lighter. Yeah, they would have been in the tournament last year. He, he's a, an outstanding coach. He did such a great job at Stephen F. Austin. And, and there's, there's 
Adam Miller burying a three. He has got beautiful form on that left-handed jump shot. He's got a wide base and a strong base. What a good-looking player Adam Miller is. 8-2 of the early going. This is a very talented Illinois team. Johnson gets into the paint, kick out, hurt launches. Can't leave him. Williams was fortunate there. He got caught in no man's land off that drive. Goldwire is not leaving Dasumu, not helping off at all. Colburn inside, left hand wouldn't go, Johnson pulls it down. Mark Williams did a nice job of staying between Coburn and the basket, just making him score over him. Good hands by Frazier to knock it away from the heart charging Jalen Johnson. Duke's offense been sluggish early, there's a takeaway. Williams, left hand, it'll go, and it's 10-2, the steal in the bucket, and Illinois doing a good job on the defensive end. Illinois is tough. I mean, they play low. They're getting over screens. They're communicating. You know, people forget that one loss they had was to Baylor, and Baylor is outstanding. I mean, they're national champion good. Colburn, good body control for the big guy. And how about the confidence to throw the ball backwards to a seven-footer in the catch and finish? Well, you, you would be a courageous defender to take a charge on Kofi Coburn. Desumu. And he gets fouled. He'll shoot when. Sir hasn't stopped. If you're able, please support Cancer Research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes to Cancer Research. Just a, a remarkable stat. The idea that every penny that you donate to the V Foundation goes directly to cancer research. It should give everyone a, a lot of comfort to know that. What, a, what an amazing job the V Foundation has done over the years. Illinois with the early lead and a foul inside. And I believe they got the Holy Cross transfer, Jacob Grandison, with the foul. That's his first. And yeah, one of the things Duke has been working on the last week has been better offensive execution, better fundamentals in the half court, trying to slow down a little bit, make better use of the dribble, and be stronger with the ball because they've had so many turnovers in their first three games. You know, they're averaging about 17 turnovers a game. Yeah, it's been a major issue for them. Hurt to the goal and puts it in. And that was an example of slowing down a little bit, just the playing slow to fast and the great cut by Matthew Hurt because Illinois did not jump to the ball and take away the ball side of the cut. As soon as the pass is made, all of a sudden you're cutting right past Trent Frazier, the defender, turns his head and Matthew Hurt is just gone. Just a, a really good job and a really good cut and an excellent delivery for an easy layup. We haven't seen much of that up until that play because there's been very little flow for Duke on the offensive end. You got to give credit to Illinois' defense. But when you're stronger with the ball, make stronger cuts and better use of the dribble, you've got a much better opportunity to score in the half court. Granderson picks up another. He's got two. And now Hurt. Jumper wouldn't go, tip wouldn't go. Jay, we need to update the tote board. Would you please stand by? Challenge update, and Ohio State has beaten Notre Dame. And so the Big Ten now leading 3-1. Still too early to call. Steve Kornacki standing by. I, you know, you beat me to the punch, but I, <laughs> next year I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demand that we have one of those boards for me to work on. John Shambi, Jay Billis, and John King. Jeremy Roach in the 
surprise freshman. Duke had the number two freshman class in the country, according to Paul Biancardi, our outstanding recruiting group. And Wendell Moore continues to struggle from the field. That's now in his last three games, one of 17 from the field. And Miller, you talked about that great shooting for him. The freshman buries that one. The freshman class for Illinois is excellent. And I'm a big fan of Andre Curbelo, who's just switched off on Matthew Hurt. And that's going to be a foul. He's wrestling him in there. <laughs> and the jumper there, that will go for Joey Baker. And he needed that one. He's also struggled a bit. One of eight from three coming into this one on the season. One of six in his last couple games. And now it's Tsumu. Illinois leading by 11. Get the high screen for Bajanishvili who can pick and pop or pick and roll. And a travel. It's a turnover. Second turnover for Illinois. Brad Underwood's team, you mentioned their one loss to Baylor. Just speaking with him briefly, pre I mean, he just raved about Scott Drew's team. And why wouldn't you? I mean, he saw him up close, but one of the things that Brad Underwood said was he, he thought that Baylor was would be better last year, but he says they're better this year. He, he thought the loss of Freddie Gillespie would, would hurt them a little bit more, but he said they're better this year than they were last year, and that's saying something because they were number one last year. Curbelo on Moore, and they get the foul on Curbelo. It's a smart play by Wendell Moore. He's bigger and just went right into Curbelo. He got him more on the reach than sort of a block. Looked like he brought his arms down, then tried to reach there toward the end. But he, he had pretty good position. You know, you, once, you, once you have legal guarding position, you're allowed to move to maintain it. Yeah, I thought he did. Kirk gets inside and rattles that one home, and he's got six. Well, they need him to score. Offense is an area that Mike Krzyzewski feels like needs to get polished up a little bit. Yeah, he's got to be their leading scorer. He's their best shooter. Good move. Curbelo and a great feed inside. Bijanashvili. Boy, talk about changing speeds. That's what Curbelo did there. He's got a great feel for the game and an excellent passer. Watch Andre Curbelo here. Just splits two defenders. Draws Wendell Moore over from the weak side. There's not a rotation down that's fast enough by Joey Baker. And that's just a beautiful pass to Bejanishvili, who came in against Baylor and had a great game. I think he had 13 in the first half, 15 for the game. Moore long on that shot. Back to Curbelo for a second. He confessed the other day with the media in a Zoom conference that his fantasy as a young player was always to play for Duke, that that's where he wanted to go. He grew up in Puerto Rico. His dad, Joel, played along with Orlando Antigua, who is on the staff for Brad Underwood. They played together professionally, Antigua and Curbelo's dad. Also played with Edgar Padilla, who played at UMass back in the mid-90s for John Calipari. Garbello lost the handle that time. Breakfield. And that's too strong. Pulled down by DeMonte Williams. Illinois by 11. Garbello gets into the paint and knifes in for the deuce. But Breakfield took a quick shot for Duke. Not really in transition against the set defense, and Illinois made him pay by taking it the other way. It's remarkable when you take a questionable shot on one end, usually turns into a layup or an easy one on the other. I'm not sure how many Blue Devils were prepared to rebound off that shot. Roach with the jumper, and that'll go Jeremy Roach, the freshman. Goal wires making it so difficult for Curbelo to bring the ball. One, to catch it, and two, to bring the ball up. Watch how he's having to turn his back. Curbelo, Miller gets another. That's his third three. He's got nine. Can you imagine for Illinois having these guys play together if they stick around for four years? And it's got some shades of Darren Williams and Dee Brown. 
He may not be quite that good yet, but it, get, it makes you think about it. Inside, Bajanashvili rejects it. And Illinois off to the fast start. Well, Illinois has gotten it done on the defensive end. They've turned defense into offense. And Andre Curbelo, one-handed, getting it to the rim. Great feel for the game. What a good-looking young player. And he's got a partner in Adam Miller who can knock it down. The ACC Big Ten Challenge. He got it! Oh, my God. Wow. What a great ball game. Unbelievable. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Continental Tire rolls on tomorrow on ESPN. 7-15, it'll be Indiana, number 20, Florida State. And as well, number four, Michigan State, number 18, Virginia. That's at 9-15. Hauser brother alert. Yeah, the Hauser brothers, Joey Hauser, who is uh, one of the best players at Michigan State, and then Sam Hauser who transferred from Marquette. They both transferred from Marquette, Sam Hauser at Virginia. And today's Sam Hauser's birthday. Wow, how about that? Flying in, and Coburn couldn't get it to go. Like Jalen Johnson got it up top. But even when Kofi Coburn gets hit, you can't tell because he's so big and strong. Yeah. Doesn't get knocked off balance. <laughs> Well, Duke scored twice on out-of-bounds under plays, and I know that Brad Underwood's not going to be happy about that. Those are like special teams in football. Good rebound by Johnson. It'll stay with Duke. Let's take a look. Now take a look at Coburn up top. You know, that's a foul, and there's no question about it. But Coburn's so big that well, there's a lot of ball there too, but, but there's definitely contact up top and on the body, but he's so big. Oftentimes, big guys just don't get foul calls the same yeah. way as little guys do. It's a big thing Jeff Van Gundy talks about on the NBA broadcast, how the bigs and the littles get officiated differently. Now, look, I know Johnson is a bigger player, but I mean, it, he references Shaq a lot of times when he talks about it, but just how big players get officiated unfairly at times. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's difficult, but when you're going up for a shot, shooters should be protected no matter what. One of the difficulties for big guys is they play in a physical position down in the post, so there's naturally going to be a lot more contact, and the referees have been instructed to clean up post play. So all of a sudden you get a foul or two in the post while the referees are setting the tone, and you're sitting, and guards don't have to go through that. Johnson did a good job sticking with the play as Williams knocked it out of his hands, but he collected, put it back in. And his first two, the freshman Jalen Johnson, a big recruit for Mike Krzyzewski. Last five minutes or so, Duke has been a lot stronger with the ball on the offensive end. Scored on a couple out-of-bounds underneath plays. Haven't had the ball knocked away. Miller with the shot clock winding down, pulls up. Tough shot. Goldwire did a nice job of making him take a fadeaway. Johnson absorbs the contact, couldn't get it to go, and Colburn the rebound. Jalen Johnson is so good in the open court. Frazier missing, Johnson rebounds, and here comes Roach. Stewart hangs, couldn't hit, Colburn rebounds, and the Illini the other way. Trent Frazier now, Illinois leading this one by 10. Coburn's open inside early when he gets that initial post position off a rim run. He's got to get the ball right away. Good cut. Frazier, no call, and that one tracked down by Goldwire. Williams steps in, deflects it out of bounds. It'll be Duke basketball. Good hands by DeMonte Williams. Trent Frazier. The senior from Wellington, Florida. A really good defender. He's got a little deep brown look to him. No doubt. But an excellent defender. Left-hander. He's already made some solid defensive plays. Hurt. Good fake. And Hurt takes advantage of the mismatch. He had the quickness advantage on the perimeter on Colburn, went around him, pulled up, and then buried the jumper. 
And he's got eight. And he got around him because uh, Coburn went for that shot fake. So you got to close out on him, but you can't go for the shot fake and let him get around you. And the line eye, and then that 05 team that Bill Self put together and Bruce Weber took to the championship game against North Carolina in 05. Which team of those two do you think was the better Illinois team? 89 or 05? I'm biased towards 89. I love that 89 team. It was a great team. I mean, if somebody just boxes Sean Higgins out on the weak side, yeah, you're going to the championship game and, and could easily win it. Yeah. And Kendall Gill and saw Nick Anderson. I mean, that was a that was a fantastic basketball team. Stephen Bardo. Yeah, they they were so exciting. So here's Kofi Colburn. Buries that one. You know, that 05 team wasn't bad either. No, now. I know. Darren Williams, D. Brown, Luther Head, Roger Powell. And Colburn able to get both of them, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, and a guy who will be one of the best big men in the country this year. Let to get the ball to Jalen Johnson, let him drive it because Coburn's guarding him. Draw him away from the basket. Maybe pick up a, a foul on him. Shot clock under 10, lob for Hurd. Off his hands, out of bounds, Illinois basketball. Well, they tried to get it down to Hurt because he had a smaller defender on him. Coleman Hawkins switched off and left a mismatch down low with Matthew Hurt. Just wasn't the, the pass to get there. And Frazier did a good job of using his leverage to stay low. John Shelby, Jay Billis, Cameron Indoor Stadium. Illinois by 10. But Corbello is so crafty with the ball, isn't he? No doubt. And they get a bump. I think that's on Hurt, his second. I think Coach K thought that was going to be a walk when yeah. the whistle blew. I think the majority of the players on the court thought yeah, that as did. well. Yeah, they did. They did. Just a little drag of the pivot foot, but the referee saying he was bumped, and that's what caused it. One of the things that's interesting, Illinois is off to this fast start at 26-16, and DeSumo's been pretty quiet. Yeah, very quiet. But it shows they're not just one guy. Bad pass. Got to be stronger with that and can't pick up your dribble. Johnson Hoyce. Got hurt and over they the get top. hurt, yep. And that's his third, by the way. Yeah, just not the not the foul you want to pick up. You like Matthew Hurt being aggressive. Yep. But you can't get that foul back. You can get a bucket back. You cannot get a foul back. And that takes a lot of scoring off the floor and a lot of experience for Duke. Really their best score, yeah? Oh, no question. Yeah, no question. And that's an area where they are a bit challenged. All right, we got a couple of top 20 college basketball matchups coming up on Sunday on ESPN. First one Eastern, number 19 Richmond. Chris Mooney's team already a win over Kentucky. They take on number 11 West Virginia and then at three it's number 13 Texas and number two Baylor. There's some sort of issue. Brad Underwood said it's one and one and the officials didn't know that. So they're going to try to check and see where the problem was. John Shire and Mike Stevens having a chat. Well, they they have to know who the foul, who, who to shoot, because they didn't, the, the officials didn't know it was the one and one. So it looks like it's going to be Desu is that Desumu there? It's going to be Desumu yeah. shooting that he's going over the back of. Yeah. That's really unusual. I can't recall a time where the officials didn't know what the foul situation was. And indeed, it will be 
Ayo Desumu. Illinois by 10, 6.14 to go, first half. Rod Groover and Mike Stevens continue to talk it over. Well, hopefully they won't have to go back and look at the clock or anything. Krzyzewski looking on. So I believe they get the foul on Hurt, his third. And they adjusted the clock to 619. Desumu, a 73% career free throw shooter. And knocks down the front end. Yeah, the officials had the foul right. It's just they, they thought it, they didn't know it was a one and one. So they weren't paying attention to who got fouled to be able to shoot it. And then the time, I mean, Brad Underwood was you know, jumping up and down saying, wait a minute, we're shooting free throws. Unusual. Johnson spinning, step back, jumper. Colburn pulls it down. That was pretty well defended by DeMonte Williams. Switched out on Johnson. Johnson's got a height and length advantage. But Williams, as his experience would tell him, stay in front, make him shoot over, and he had to take a fadeaway. Curbelo, just a little hesitation, and they get a walk on him. And that's the fifth turnover on Illinois. That's Brad Underwood telling his freshman guard, just come to a two-footed jump stop. And Illinois does a really good job of that. Usually when they get into the paint and drive, they'll come to a jump stop, pivot, and then look out. And they usually find open shooters that can shot fake and then drive a closeout off of that pass. They're hard to defend that way. Goldwire and Curbelo bumped him. And that'll be the second on uh, Andre Curbelo. Jay, I want to ask you about something that Coach K talked about yesterday, and that was the idea that in the midst of the pandemic, lack of scrimmages and trying to figure out who your team is, he said he really confessed the idea that what they had initially thought his team would be able to do offensively, once they actually got into games and saw their team on the court, he said, oh, no, we can't do that. He thought they'd be a little more driving kick, maybe a little be able to play smaller. Yeah, more a perimeter-oriented team that, that played more motion and didn't have as many sets. But they're, they're going to have to play a little bit bigger. Once he saw them, he realized there were no exhibitions to see it. And he said, look, you can theorize all you want to, but until you see it on the floor, you don't really know. And Janishvili lost the handle. But they're making adjustments now. Everybody's in the same boat. Nobody had exhibition games. But when you've got an older team, you've got a much better feeling of what everybody can do. But one of the things Duke is dealing with as well is they don't have a commanding presence or commanding voice at the point guard position. So they're having to echo commands and uh, make sure they're talking more on the offensive end so that everybody's on the same page. Their timing, everything starts at the same time. They've been going too fast. That's led to a number of turnovers. and. It's going to be a, a work in progress. You're used to hearing teams mentioning we need to communicate better at the defensive end. Yes. Coach K was saying we need to communicate better at the offensive end. Here's Goldwire stopping at the free throw line. Now Johnson kick out to Wendell Moore. And he turned it over. Great play by Miller. Miller, right hand, all oh, spun out. And now the loose ball, Goldwire tracks it down. Duke the other way, trying to cut into a 12-point deficit. Oh, and a throw down there from Mark Williams. Well done. His first two. Just a smart play. Roach, Roach's drive brought Bishanishvili over from the weak side. And when he saw that, he just lobbed it up to Mark Williams. Six turnover on the Illini. Take a look at the alley-oop. Take a look at number 15 here, middle of the lane. Once he comes over, Bishanishvili 
All you have to do is throw it up to the rim and Mark Williams is going to dunk it in because there's not enough time for another defender to drop down and get in front of him. Williams a guy with big size seven feet tall about 245 pounds. Cameron Indoor Stadium on the road Illinois leads by 10. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pandora. Listen to music from uninterrupted radio only on Pandora. No, they've actually got all the Duke wins over Virginia Tech that are listed. So there's not enough room for that other stuff. <laughs> wow. If if people could hear the game day crew going back at each other, oh. the only the only guy that doesn't participate is LaFonzo Ellis yes. because he's too sweet That's of a human being. That is correct. And I am going to get him to curse yes. before before it's all over. It may take a while. Boy, a little little staggered screen up top for Desumu. And now he's got, that's his sixth point, got five rebounds. And, you know, but Seth Greenberg made a really good point about, you know, Duke's always had, at least lately, a guy you could throw it to when you needed it, and he could go get you a bucket. You know, last year was Vernon Carey. You throw it into him in the post, and he could score, get fouled, or both. You know, you obviously had, uh, R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson the year before. There's a three from Trent Frazier as he buries that off the feed from Desumu. And Duke calls time. Just like that, Illinois leading this one by 13 at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Way downtown. Got it, Trent Frazier. He does look like D. Brown. Welcome back, Illinois and Duke Cameron Indoor Stadium. And here tonight, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and it's Illinois by 13. And right there, getting loose, Roach. And he's got four. It's just a keeper off a little dribble handoff action. And everybody went with the handoff instead of staying with the ball. Toss inside, Bajanishvili is fouled. You know, the Illinois spacing of the floor is so good. And, you know, we talk about spacing all the time, but if you can't shoot, you know, the spacing doesn't matter. They're stretching the defense, and they're basically playing four perimeter players around one post, that post being Bajanishvili. And if you've got four guys around a post right in the middle of the floor, that post player is always open. You just have to get it to the right angle to get him the ball. Now, fans, the NBA preseason starts Friday, and we'll have coverage Kings and Blazers, bubble free, 10.30 Eastern. And that's coming up again on Friday on ESPN. NBA is back. Vejanishvili knocks it down, and he's got four. Well, that's a good tandem to have Kofi Coburn and Georgie Vejanishvili they can play together. They can play separately at the five. Inside and getting loose for that bucket is Jeremy Roach. Nicely done. And Brad Underwood is saying that's a little bit of continuation there. Where's the foul? Is it right there or is it right there? But a really good take by Roach. And just you got to have Coburn's got to come over there quicker. Not necessarily get there to get the charge. But you got to make your presence known. You can't be late on that. Go over and wipe that thing away. A great drive by Roach. 
Boy, when he learns to run a team, that's the next step for him. He's, yeah. he's going to be terrific. Yeah, they say they need him to communicate more on offense, but he was a number 19 recruit in ESPN top 100. Chose Duke over Carolina, Kentucky, Villanova. It's back to 10. Miller now. It's been a big part of their attack. The freshman Adam Miller. Shot clock winding down. Desumu gets inside and puts it in. You know, it's funny. Jordan Goldwire knocking the ball away from Desumu actually made that play. It was a broken play, and Desumu had a better chance to score after it was knocked away than before. He is a closer, man. At the end of a shot clock, I'm not sure who in America you'd rather have the ball. Oh. Really good look up ahead. And Baker got the foul, and then Roach went down hard. What a terrific block by Joey Baker. And that was going to be a, an easy dunk. And Baker just took that thing away. That's the end of the play there. And you see Coburn just caught Roach in the face unintentionally. Heck of a play by Joey Baker to save a basket, which ultimately led to a couple of free throws. And then Roach goes down hard as he gets clipped. I mean, you're talking about 6'1", 175, getting fouled hard by 7 feet, 285. Yeah, you're counting teeth at the end of that one. Mm -hmm. Henry Coleman will check in. Another of their prized freshman. Illinois leading this one by 11. 140 to go first half. John Chambi, Jay Billis back down to 10. This is a, an important period right now in the game. 140 left in the first half. Now can Duke cut this down to a, a two possession game? Roach has the last seven for Duke. Desumu hangs, flips it inside. Colburn got it blocked. And Johnson was on the baseline. Duke stepping it up defensively. Jalen Johnson made a spectacular block here. Goes right up and takes it right out of the hands of the stronger Kofi Coburn. I got it, I got it. Frazier gets a three. Well, Frazier's an outstanding player. He's a big time scorer. He's scored over 1,200 points in his career, or close to it. I think he's right at 1,200. Yep. You know, he's had 20, 30 point games and was a, a top scorer before Io DeSumo. He's taken more of a complimentary role as a scorer, but he can still get you 20, 25 in a game. Johnson knocks down that shot. He's got four. And that's his game. Not only in transition, but in the half court. He wants to get a little bit closer. And so when he gets into the lane, he can pull up and knock down a little short one. The, the next step for his game is to lengthen out that range and become more of a perimeter shooter. But so good off the dribble, can go left or right, stops, keeps his pivot foot, and takes his time, just goes up over the smaller Frazier and knocks that shot down. What a talented freshman. And we've got an amazing freshman class, not only on the floor here for both Illinois and Duke, but nationally. I mean, you've seen Kate Cunningham of yep. Oklahoma State and Jalen Suggs of Gonzaga. We both saw Josh Christopher at uh, Arizona State and Marcus Bagley as well on that same team. Those and guys are terrific. Another guy I got a chance to see in person was Evan Mobley. Evan and Mobley. The skill set for a guy seven feet, the balance, you know, he would be on the move and they would get him the basketball in spots you're not used to seeing a big handle the ball and he was fine and not turning it over when yeah. they were on the move. Big guy at USC and another Pac-12 player who's fantastic is Zaire Williams at Stanford. That dude can shoot it, man. 2-2-1, well, two, two, three-quarter court pressure now from Duke. The Sumu gets it up ahead. And Frazier now. The Sumu. Handling here. 
Illinois by 11. Goldwire on Desumu. Good fake. Frazier, Coburn, Bianichvili. Puts it up and scores. Wow, Georgie Bianishvili. Well, that's a big time play by Bianishvili going right into the chest of Jalen Johnson, backing him up, and then using that left hand. Now, he's a left hander, but he's got single coverage in the post, just backs him up, and then shoots right over the top of him. Just by getting into his chest, he made it really hard for Johnson to use that athleticism to jump up and bother that shot. Jay Bianishvili, a guy who is he's got some finesse to him but he's also physical physical really skilled so he can play inside or out he can play pick and roll and roll hard to the basket he can short roll or he can play pick and pop and knock down the three good catch gold wire and the sumo will hang on to it and illinois will take a 43-29 lead to the break. Duke's going to have to hit some threes if they're going to get back in this one. 52% shot that Illinois got in the first half was vastly the superior to the quality of shot that Duke got. Duke shot only 37% in that first half, 0 for 7 from 3. And Duke's offense in the second half is going to have to help its defense. I mean, they turned the ball over a bit, and even some of the shots that they took wound up being turnovers because Illinois able to take it the other way. And Desumu, who didn't get off to the best of starts, still had eight points, eight rebounds, and four assists in that first half. And the start of our second half right here of our Sonic Blockbuster. Demonte Williams buries a three from the corner. They get another triple. That's eight for Williams, and the seventh three-pointer for the Illini, and that is the biggest lead of the game. It is 17. And you talk about quality of shot, Boog. That was just beautiful basketball because the ball moved from one side to the other. They made the extra pass. Tasumu drove the baseline on the left side, kicked it out to the opposite wing. It was, you know, it's just a little screen roll, and then he wound up essentially refusing it, going the other way. And a beautiful pass to Williams in the corner who was ready to shoot. Johnson inside, it gets Colburn in the air, can't hit, Colburn pulls down the rebound and that is his fifth rebound. Colburn went straight up, but Johnson still needs to go to his body if he wants to get that foul. Johnson tries a three. And that's tracked down there by Trent Frazier. That was a good closeout by Kofi Colburn. Coburn inside, and he is fouled. Just getting started here, second half, John Chambi and Jay Billis. Coburn closed out short to Jalen Johnson, took away the drive, and then put late pressure on that shot. Johnson's not a good shooter, but he just sort of dared him to take the shot and then got a little hand up late. Instead of give it, you know, going out there, going for a shot fake as he did in the first half and allowing Johnson to go past him. That's a much better job by Kofi Coburn defensively. Foul on Johnson. That is his third. And by the way, none of this is sneaking up on Mike Krzyzewski. When we talked to him the other day, he talked about Illinois' offensive power, elite athletes. He talked about what a great shooter Miller is and their perimeter game and how tough it can be to deal with. Yeah, he was obviously very impressed by Illinois. How could you not be? And, you know, Illinois' loss, talk about a good loss against Baylor, and they played Baylor tough. But Baylor is ridiculously good. They're just a little bit ahead and a little bit stronger defensively, I think, than Illinois. And basically, they're the best defensive perimeter in the country this year. And I don't think it's even close. Davion Mitchell and Macy Oteague and Jared Butler. And then they bring in Adam Flagler from Presbyterian. That guy can shoot with anybody in the country. A good mid-range game, can stretch it to three. And they are very, very good. Yeah, Scott Drew's got a great team. They were great last year. And their big guy, Jonathan Chamwachachua, say that ten times fast, who is, who is nicknamed Everyday John because he brings it every day. 
He is a pogo stick in the post and can really play. Good pass. Coburn, step back. He was fouled. Couldn't convert, but he'll shoot two. That's beautiful. He had the angle, and then Illinois got a break to the high post in order to get him the ball. A terrific job by Williams to break to the high post because that's where the angle was to get the ball into Coburn. Just really well done. Frazier got it to Williams and to Coburn, and that's just a play that he's got to finish. And he's more than capable of doing that. That was not a hard foul. He can make that and should. This should be a three-point play to be able to complete for Illinois. That's, that's sort of what I was referencing. And I guess when you know you get a former big guy, always talking about the big guys always open in the post when you got four round one. And that was an example of, of Coburn was open. They just needed to get the ball to the right angle to get it to him. Right. Not able to hit either, and this is Goldwine. Getting nicely to the rim is Jeremy Roach. He's shown a couple of quick moves to the 10 here tonight. He's second on this team in assists and steals, but also turnovers. But he's been very aggressive off the dribble in this game. And Goldwire just got the ball down court quickly. It was just him and Roach early on. Yeah. And yet they still got a score. Roach with 11. That's an offensive foul, and it'll go the other way. And so it's a great position by Brakefield. And Co Coburn's just got to understand that you're going to, anytime you get in the post like that, look, th this was a flop. He was in position, but there's no way that that contact would cause any strong player to go down. It was a, a great play by Brakefield to get the call. But if referees want to know why guys flop, that's why they flop. It keeps getting rewarded. Hurt. We'll go to the line. Orlando Antigua chatting with Kofi Coburn. That last foul on DeMonte Williams, his third. Duke looking to chip away. It's a 17-point Illinois advantage. No fans at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Only a little over. 9,000. Fans are represented, but. And Duke announced early on in the school year that they weren't going to have fans at all in football or basketball and any other sport uh, for, the, for the year. And just today, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper just had an executive order that uh, is a stay at home order starting on Friday from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Wire took it away. Hurt gets it back after the Desumu block. A dozen for him, and it's down to a 15-point game. What a great block by Desumu, but excellent job by Hurt of not giving up on the play. He followed the play and was able to just pick that up. Just a great block, and there were more white shirts that got down the court quickly than. Illinois players, and that was what led to that stick back. Just not as much urgency by Miller and Bajanishvili to get back. But Sumu had hurt on him. He probably should have taken him if he realized he's got three fouls. He can't really afford to foul you. The Sumu. It's not a good shot. He can make it, but it wasn't a good job. Roach inside, knocked out of bounds, and it stays Duke basketball. So much contact on that shot. And my goodness. And it's happening on both ends. There have been a number of times where Illinois players have been fouled. What a great crossover. That's a foul. That's ridiculous. If you're not going to protect shooters, what's the point? Frankie Billis, if you had the 1654 mark. <laughs> well, we talked about it with Illinois getting fouled earlier in the game. You know, they're just not protecting shooters out there. Rebound pulled down by Stewart, and Duke on the go, trailing by 15. Stewart, offensive foul. 
So the freshman DJ Stewart picks up his second. Anytime people fall down, I mean, it, it basically yeah. caught him in the shoulder. And, you know, the, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy for officials. And these guys are three vets. They know what a charge is and what one is not. And they've handed out a couple in this game on both ends that just weren't charges. Yeah, Trent Frazier had the old timber right there, you know. Yeah, but, but I mean, in, in, in his defense, you sell it. You know, if they're going to give it to you, take it. It's not his fault. Travel and a turnover and things getting a little sloppy. Joey Baker checking in for the Blue Devils. Ninth turnover on the Illini. 16-16 to go here, second half. And Illinois by 15. A pair of top 10 teams squaring off from Cameron Indoor Stadium. I'll tell you what, Illinois is definitely top five in hair. Yes. This is a top five hair team. No doubt. Good play. Cut to the basket. Goldwire and one. And Jordan will go to the line. That's beautiful. A dribble at the baseline. Defender turned his head and Goldwire was gone. A little step and go. And how about that finish going up strong and still looked like he lost it up there but his eyes never left the rim. What a beautiful pass on that cut. It's a big time finish by Jordan Goldwire. Now Goldwire, a guy known for his defense, and the senior plays elite level defense. He's got such great ball pressure, and his hands are so good. He gets a ton of steals and deflections. Here's the 2 2 1 three quarter court pressure now. Got to break somebody in the middle. Miller gets the Desumu pass. Desumu inside. Offensive <laughs> foul. <laughs> See, that's another one. I mean, they're just giving block after block a charge. Turnabout is fair play. No way was that a charge. What a mess this game has become on a charge level. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pandora. Listen to music from uninterrupted radio only on Pandora. And the Queso Burger for just $3.99, only for a limited time at Sonic. Yeah, welcome back. And Jay Billis, you were just talking about how that wasn't the charge. No, it wasn't a close. It wasn't close. But there have been a number of charge block calls in this game that haven't been close that have been called charges. And you know, Joey Baker, give him credit because he got the call. But he had never established legal guarding position, didn't maintain it, and wasn't there in order to take the charge. But we saw a similar thing at the other end. And on those plays, what the announcer usually does is says, well, the charge block play, the most difficult play to call in basketball. No, it's not. And it certainly wasn't hard on that end or that end. Those are just really bad misses by the officials. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's just not. <laughs> usually we cover up for him. Can't cover up for that. Duke got a 7-0 run. I thought that was a nice angle on the Snoop cam. My tie looked good. Goldwater jumper is good. He's got nine. And how about this? All of a sudden, it's a 10-point game. 9-0. And Duke with the pressure. Goldwire was that off to Sumu? No. It'll stay Illinois basketball. Well, the full court pressure, this 2-2-1, has really taken Illinois out of, out of rhythm. You know, they, they don't have as much time to run their half-court offense once they get it across, and the pressure has gotten them out of sorts a little bit. This is a spot, though, where you would really notice the fans. Yes. And they're not here, and yet you still can feel the vibe of the momentum shifting a bit. Yeah, fans, fans add to the environment, and I think with momentum swings, it, it can feel a little bit different. 
but at the end of the day, it's the players. I've never heard a coach come into a press conference and say, well, we lost the game. Our fans just weren't into it. Yeah. Sumu gets trapped. Gets it up ahead. Hawkins, loose ball. Hawkins, and Alex Miller. Hawkins was fortunate there. You're not going to be able to dribble that too many times. The goal wire right there. So, 10 point game. Frazier. Desumu, pull up. Soft touch. That's nice. Pretty. A little. Ball screen action, roll replace. And Bijanishvili was rolling. Dasumu was the replace guy, replacing up from the baseline up top. And that can be awfully hard to guard. Kirk way off the mark. And now they got numbers. Lob up ahead. Bijanishvili with the throw down. A shot you'd rather not have taken leads to a run out and an easy bucket. And all of a sudden, a couple baskets just when it was getting a little bit, a little bit closer, and Duke's within striking distance. Illinois moves it out again. I'll tell you, Jay, Dusumu has done a really nice job of spotting cutters and guys. I mean, he got this up ahead. Yeah, it's, well, especially when you got a, a four on one, but just a really good pass. And it was an excellent play, I thought, excellent call out of the timeout for. Brad Underwood to go to that ball screen roll replace action where you know Dasumu goes and screens Bijanishvili into the ball screen action so he's got some separation and then he's the replace guy coming up. That's hard to guard. Dasumu spinning. Frazier inside. That'll go right hand. Well done. He's got eight. It's the second drive that is getting Duke right now. If they stop the initial one and then you've got a pivot and a, and a pass back out, a throwback, then they're attacking the closeout. Frazier did a great job of attacking that closeout. So Desumu's got the ball, gets it into the lane, and then passes it back out. And all of a sudden, you got Trent Frazier able to drive to his right, a left handed player giving a little fake to his left and driving right. Nobody there to come over and stop that drive. And he's able to get all the way to the rim. That's just too easy. But man, that, that second drive has really been difficult for this young Duke defense to deal with. Now the other thing that's hard, six players with eight or more points, so a lot of versatility. DeSumo sits with three fouls. Williams able to grab it. Knock it off of Baker, and it ends up being Illinois basketball. Boy, what a great play by Williams. He was active to the ball and went after the ball. Goes and knocks it away, grabs it, and then has the presence of mind to save it off of Joey Baker's legs. And he is such a good defender, Demonte Williams. I'm so impressed with him, his, his total game. He just seems to make the right play and be in the right position. He talks. Really good cutter, too. So now some pressure. And then out of bounds, you mentioned DeMonte Williams. And of course, his dad, remember, Frank Williams, he was a Big Ten Player of the Year. Two-time All-America, but he won Conference Player of the Year back in 01. Scored close to 1,500 points, and a guy did a little bit of everything. DeMonte kind of fits that bill. Yeah. Well, his dad was a better scorer. But, uh, if I remember right, Frank played for Lon Kruger first and then Bill Self. He's in the same backcourt early with Corey Bradford. Yep. And, I mean, that was, he, what a heck of a player he was. And his son is truly outstanding also. And Williams has picked up his four. There's so many interesting parallels. I mean, Brad Underwood. He's an Illinois guy, but he played at Kansas State for Jack Hartman, one of the really the all time great coaches. And so he's in the, the line of, of sort of Henry Iba in, in that line of coaches. And then he wound up at Oklahoma State for a year. But Lon Kruger also played for, for Jack Hartman at Kansas State. Remember those Kansas State, those old Kansas State uniforms where they had the light purple jerseys and the sure. dark purple pants? Absolutely. 
I, I remember I went to the NCAA tournament game at Pauley Pavilion between number one Oregon State and Kansas State with Orlando Blackman, Ed Neely, Tim Jankovic was on that team, the head coach uh, at SMU. And uh, Kansas State wound up beating Oregon State in that game. They had Steve John Oregon State had Steve Johnson. They were outstanding. What a game. They get the foul on Goldwire. And that is his second. This one has turned into a little bit of a grind here in the second half. 14 fouls on Duke. Miller gets it in. No call out of bounds. And it'll be Duke basketball. John Chomby, Jay Billis, Duke down by 14. They're 0 for 11 from three tonight, Jay. You got to figure if they're going to win this game or really get back into it, that's going to have to change. Yes, and this is their best three point shooter by far. He's in the second half, really hasn't drawn many good shots and hadn't certainly hadn't hit anything. Yeah, Matthew Hurt career 42% from three. He was over 50% coming in. Nice move by Carbello. Well, coming into the game, Hurt and Brakefield were 14 of 24 from three for well, they were 58%, but the rest of the team only 25%. And now they finally got one, and that's from DJ Stewart. First three of the game for Duke. And Stewart has struggled shooting the ball. He was 0 of 6 from three in his last two. But he's a good shooter. Loose ball, fight for it. And possession arrow, it belongs to Duke. Just not strong enough with the ball when that little double team came over, but both players getting on the floor. Curbelo jumping down there as well, and Duke gets the possession arrow. And that actually from a person that we have hanging upside down from the scoreboard there, middle of the court. No, it's a robo cam, I swear. <laughs> Way downtown, Stewart couldn't hit. Bishanishvili pulls down the rebound. Frazier gets hammered. Breaking the action. 11.40 to go here. Second half. And Illinois with the lead. Miami was down huge. And they pick up a win. It's hard to figure how they ended up picking up the win there. And Minnesota just gets past Boston College. Yeah, Miami was way down. They played without Chris Likes, their top scorer, best player, and still wound up winning that game. But the Big Ten is ridiculously loaded this year. Talk about having you know, Michigan State and what a good pass and catch. Great block by Matthew Hurd. Coburn got rejected. Curbelo's done a really nice job finding people in good spots. But Illinois, Iowa, Michigan State, Wisconsin. You know, Rutgers is much better than they get credit for. I mean, it is going to be a fist fight every night in the Big Ten. Curbelo. Bijanishvili, offensive rebound, plus one, he'll go to the line. Georgi Bijanishvili. And on the offensive end, Illinois really got down the court to cover that board. Difficult finish here for Curbelo, but a whole lot of orange shirts and not enough white ones if you're looking at it from Duke's perspective. But an excellent job by Bijanishvili. He is such a good player. And to have he and Coburn together, and that is a difficult tandem. And then they can play, and you can go four around either one of them. Wendell Moore contested by Coburn. Good idea, just behind him. Yeah, Corbello trying to find Dosumu. 14th turnover. All right, so. Big Ten teams of the AP Top 25. They get that group of six, and then three others receiving votes. It's absurd. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's the best conference in the country, and I don't think it's a close call, frankly. 
Bucket there from Jamin Brakefield. And that's his first three, his first three points of the game. But he's been really efficient and productive in short minutes on this season. He led the team coming in in offensive rebounds. He had seven total coming into this game. A pretty good game against Bellerman at 12. Corbello trying to find Colbert, flips it up, and he gets fouled. I thought Colburn got hit there when he was going up for that lob, just didn't get called. See, Brakefield went right into his chest here. Yeah, there's some contact there. I guess it didn't, not enough to warrant a foul. And now it's Andre Curbelo, the freshman from Puerto Rico. Went to Long Island Lutheran High School. And one of the truly outstanding coaches, college coaches in the country, used to be the head basketball coach at Long Island Lutheran. You know who it is? Bob McKillop. Bob McKillop at Davidson. Yeah. And Bob McKillop coached Matt Doherty in high school, the former North Carolina star player and coach. But that was at a, a different high school. It wasn't at Long Island Luther, uh, Lutheran. I think it was Holy Trinity it was where Matt went to school. Brad Underwood teaching his Illini leading by 14. Illinois really has been in control from the start of this game. Jalen Johnson jumper a little short. Stewart hesitating, kick out Goldwire. And now Johnson putting it on the floor. Shot clock is under 10. Roach inside, contested, and Colburn pulls it down. Here comes Frazier. Good job, Goldwire. And then Colburn, they go possession arrow, which stays Illinois basketball. Goldwire just gets so many deflections. He's such a disruptive defender. Mm. You know, when Boog, when Duke's been on the offensive end, anytime they've had a drive and they kick it out, you know, they're not taking the shot or driving immediately. It's been when Goldwire caught it, you know, this is a good job by Coburn to get down on the floor to maintain possession. But when Goldwire caught it after that initial drive, you know, kind of the ball kind of stopped. And that, that's the next step for Duke in the in the half court offense is to get more movement, to get positive use of the dribble, to be more attacking. And it's just going to take them some time. They've got it in them, but it's going to take them some time. Shot clock reset to 27. A reminder tonight after the game, stick around, won't you please? Sports Center. With Scott Van Pelt, and he'll have the top moments and reaction from a busy slate of college hoops. Highlights from the Cowboys and the Ravens. Must win for both. And then Ohio State and Michigan canceled. How will that impact the college football playoffs? And there's a guy with a great beard and red hair. And we love the Gingers. We do love the Gingers. Yeah. A little heat miser look. Yeah, that's right. And that's the time of year for the heat miser. Well, and I mean, look, we're unicorns, you know, we're like 1% of the population. Good talk. I don't think unicorns are actually 1% of the population. Yeah. You have to go all attorney on me, don't you, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fact checking. Great. Desumu, pull up, flips it up and in. I know Desumu with a dozen. Illinois so good at that drive in the baseline then essentially jump out of bounds to make that pass give you an angle to the opposite corner. Desumu just stopped short on that little little runner so he didn't charge. And the jumper knocked down Stewart gets it to go timeout Duke. 842 to go and Illinois by 13. 15 and then just a uh, few days back against Michigan State, they lost 75-69. So three times they've lost at home in a non-conference game since 2000. Three, 
three non-conference home losses in 20 years? Unacceptable. Isn't that what Walton would say? Unacceptable. That's, that's right, amazing. So the last time they had multiple home losses versus non-conference, 82-83. Well, that's because their center sucked. <laughs> that's one of those where it's like, Jay, how would you like me to tee up on that one? You know, you know what? Actually, you just take that. So 82-83. If, yeah, if you want the truth, I mean, the team was really good. They had Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allery and David Henderson, but the the center on that team was awful. <laughs> was it the same when you played? Like, if you were to try your best to to – think about how great a home court advantage this is now compared to when you were here. Was it that powerful then as well? No, because the team wasn't as good. I mean, the, the, you know, it became more powerful as the team got better. And I'm one of those that thinks cr crowds are great. But I don't think they contribute quite as much to winning as people like to suggest. It's just, it's the atmosphere that's fantastic. And, you know, I, I happen to believe that Duke would win just as many games if if there were half the amount of people here. Right. It's just a, a much better atmosphere, and it's so much fun. Corbello able to break the pressure. Cross up ahead, and the two big guys connect. Bijanishvili finds Kofi Coburn, and the throwdown, the one-two punch. And that's how you handle pressure. You break it to score. Jump will fall for D.J. Stewart. D.J. Stewart is a good player. He's such a multi-dimensional scorer. Not only catch and shoot, but he'll go off the dribble. He's got a good floater. And Stewart finished second for Illinois Mr. Basketball. The guy that beat him out on the other team, Adam Miller. That's a travel and a turnover. 15 turnovers on Illinois. But right now, the road team leading it by times a chance you'll hear Jay Billis say, oh, my God, again, in Indiana <laughs> at Florida State, 9-15. Number four, Michigan State, number 18, Virginia. That Maryland-Clemson game, that used to be an ACC game, but Amir Sims of Clemson is one of the most versatile big guys you'll see in basketball. Tip out, hurt and down the car. Colburn rips down the board. Illinois is led by at least 10 points the entire second half. And the Illini have been in control. They jumped out to a 14-2 lead and have never trailed. They're in control, but Duke's still within striking distance. A couple of stops, a couple of scores, and the game feels a little bit different. Uh, easy bucket for Curbelo. He's creative, isn't he? I love his game. He's got a great feel for the game. He changes speeds. He can shoot it, and he's such a creative passer. Great feel. Right hand wouldn't go. Bijanishvili pulls down the board. Illinois by 14. Number six against number 10, Curbelo. Not sure that was the shot. I don't think Brad Underwood's going to like that. That's where you just make Duke guard. you got a 16-point lead. Jumper that time will go. Anytime there's an offensive rebound, Duke's one of the better teams and better programs at it. They kick it out and look for a three. That is the best time in a basketball game to shoot a three-point shot is after an offensive rebound. And a great pass to Brakefield, who was wide open in the corner. Great job by Goldwire to stop that drive by DeSumo. Boy, DeSumo's had another terrific game. 12 points, 11 rebounds. Curbelo weaving in and floats it home. And he's got 10, the freshman from Puerto Rico. Wow. When he stays under control, 
his ability to change speeds, how crafty he is with the ball, his ability to pass it. Andre Curbelo is not only really good now, he's going to be a great player. Just comes off that ball screen. It wasn't well defended, but he splits it, snakes through, and is able to throw up that little floater because he doesn't blast off the thing. Then here's the other one, just crosses over, uses Coburn to shed some traffic, gets to that left hand. Again, not very well defended, but he took advantage of the substandard defense. And Curbelo with 10 and doing it against his dream school, as he called it, Duke. Seven guys between eight and 12 points. You talk about balance. And remember, Miller hit those three threes early that really helped set the tone, and he's been quiet since. Inside hurt with a throwdown. His little horn set, took it to the left side, and was poorly defended. Hurt just slipped it all the way to the basket. Nobody there to pick it up. Once the, once the ball goes to the left side of the floor, the defenders on the right have to, they can't hug their man. Frazier was trying to find a cutting to Sumu. Stewart now. Oh, what a play Good by Williams. Good by Williams. And Williams ends up with it. Wow. And then down hard is Miller. He's in a little bit of pain. Here's where, where jumping out of bounds can hurt you. But what a great play by Williams. I mean, that's a bucket saving play. Credit Miller, by the way, the dive to save it, and that saved the possession for him. Yes. I think he, he banged his money ball there. Sumu, a little bit strong, hurt, rebounds. Let Hurt touch it, there it is. Inside, size advantage, rolls at home, and now Hurt with 16, and Duke back within 10 as we close in on four to go. A little bit of pressure here. This is where Illinois needs to be strong with the ball and get a, get a bucket. Curbelo lost his footing, wanted the call, didn't get it. And it'll be Duke basketball. Four teams, two semifinals. New Year's Day, the college football playoff lives on ESPN. Illinois leading by 10, John Chomby, Jay Billis, and we have just learned that Michigan State and Virginia, that game has been canceled due to COVID-19 protocols, COVID issues within the Virginia program. And Boog, it is, it is proving out to be even more difficult than yes. we all anticipated to get these games in and played. Baker inside, lost the handle. Just a difficult move by Joey Baker. I mean, look, just the more travel there is, the more challenges that you face, the sumo. And we're dealing with a, a surge across the country. Yes. And the, the one thing that we haven't had in college athletics and, and really this is on the NCAA. There hasn't been a national conversation. Oh, what a play by Trent Frazier. Bonnie Colburn for the deuce in Illinois, back up by 12. But we haven't had a national conversation about what we should do, what, what's appropriate. I mean, th these players have essentially been essential workers. They get tested every day. They're not allowed to go home for the Christmas holiday because they wouldn't be able to play when they got back. They'd essentially have to quarantine their team. Uh, we're being advised by our government not to travel over the holiday, and yet these players are traveling. The NCAA told us we would never play in bubbles because they're amateurs, and we're playing in bubbles, and all these players are isolated. Yeah. And there are a lot of questions that need to be asked, but we have not had that national conversation, and that's been a, that's been a, a failure in leadership 
And it's not just, you know, it's the NCAA one, but then it's also all the different conferences. And until we have that conversation, you know, the question I have is if we were deciding to start now, would we start now? Yeah. And the answer I think would be no. Right. So what, what do we do? Like, do we tell all these players, well, you can't see your families for seven, eight months. Uh, some, of the, some of these Power Five schools are staying, their basketball and football teams are staying in hotels. And I mean, they're really not, they're not allowed to see their families. And uh, it, 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 there's a lot of stress on these players and their games are getting canceled left and right. They're yes. preparing for a game, it gets canceled. Uh, th that's, a, that's a stress point. I would say the two points that I would underline is all of the trouble that's being gone to to get these games on to show how these kids are here to play sports is one of the things. And then the other part that I would point that I would make is this is the sport that it started with. It started yeah. back in March. So I, I, it feels like collectively the plan was, gosh, I really hope it goes away. Yeah, and, and a lot of this is timing. Uh, you know, basketball is in a different different time period. Football's outdoors. You know, so we're dealing with this national surge. There, there are a lot of a lot of questions that need to be answered. But you know, clearly, these play, we're playing these games for money, and that's important. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of livelihoods at stake. But it's a balancing. And so the idea when this first started, when everybody said no students on campus, no college sports, that went away in a hurry. Yeah. And then they said, well, we'll never play in bubbles. Well, we're playing in bubbles, and we're planning a bubble for the NCAA tournament. And Val Ackerman of the Big East, who's a fantastic administrator, and fantastic leader, just announced or, or, or uh, said that they're examining having a, a bubble in the Big East for conference play and whether they have a pause yeah. if, it, if it gets bad enough. But bad enough is not defined. And we, we need a national conversation to define this. So you will not get a chance to see the Hauser brothers square off tomorrow, Michigan State and Virginia. That game postponed. COVID-19 issues within the Cavalier program. But again, I mean, we talked with Coach K yesterday, and he mentioned, you know, the kids feel it. Things are not normal. No, no. And you're basically getting, you know, roughly 25% of your games canceled. That was something Brad Underwood talked about. Is that, you know, that's kind of roughly what's taking place, right? One yes. out of every four games, it's, hey, are we playing? And, it, and it's difficult. Look, like, the, I'm sensitive to the fact that the players want to play. I get it. But we also have to acknowledge that circumstances have changed. We're, we're in a different COVID environment in Look December out! than we were in October when we were making some of these decisions. And while, while I think it's wonderful to say the players want to play, if we were playing outdoors and there were lightning in the area, we wouldn't canvas the players to decide if they wanted to play. We would say it's too dangerous, well, we've so. got to pause for now. Yeah. So that's not their decision. But I'm happy, you know, on one hand, I'm really happy we're playing. But I just think it needs to be better defined, and we need some leadership out of Indianapolis. And I know that, you know, you say that, and we never get it. And I'm not sure we ever will under the current leadership. Goldwire can't hit. Curbelo has been excellent. He's got a dozen. And the freshman, Andre Curbelo, helping to lead the Illini in the second half. I love this team. I think Illinois is really good. Like national title good, yeah? I mean, a team that could win it. Absolutely. I mean, they've got all the pieces, and as Coburn gets more experience, and and he will, you know, that combination with he and Bishanishvili, but their freshman guards are terrific. Nasumu is a national player of the year candidate. Trent Frazier can guard just about anybody, and DeMonte Williams is fantastic. This is, this is an excellent basketball team. Miller can shoot the heck out of it as well. And you know that under Brad Underwood, they're going to play super hard. And when you talk about the Sumu and Illinois transition is one of the first places you start. Yeah, when they get out in the open floor, this is a really dangerous team. They can take it all the way, but they also have a group of excellent passers. But they're athletic. They can all run the floor. 
Coburn's a rim runner, Bajanishvili a rim runner, and that can clear some things out. And then you've got a number of drivers and shooters that can take advantage of the open floor. When they've been aggressive in breaking this full court pressure the Dukes had to put on, Illinois has been excellent. Now, will the Illini look at film and say, we could be better here, we could be better here? Absolutely. But for early on in the season, after only having played four games and having some new pieces from last year in addition to some of the returnees, uh, I would feel awfully confident if I'm an Illini fan that you've got a team that can do some damage, not only in the Big Ten, but nationally. But the, the issue is you're, you're going to go through a Big Ten if everything goes forward as we hope that you can in the Big Ten this year you can play like a, a great league you can play well and lose I think in the Big Ten this year you can play very well and lose and so you're going to play very well and take some losses and you can't let that get you down S similar to what Illinois had to deal with with Baylor I mean you're playing a national championship caliber team you get beat that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to knock out anybody else you play. That was an interesting little set out of bounds. They had four guys standing out of bounds. I wonder if the referee knew who to give the ball to. Well, Desumu intended target was Colburn. It got deflected. Desumu gathered it back in and then put it home. Hurt. Down low. Hangs, hits, and he'll go to the line. Does Desumu get the assist and the bucket on that? Because if Coburn had caught it and scored, he would have gotten the uh, Desumu would have gotten the assist. I'm fine with that. I am too. I think it's a. Yeah. I like the hockey assist too. I've not seen this before. All five guys are standing out of bounds, and the referee knew. I guess knew to give the ball to Williams, but you don't see that very often. That's kind of cool. It's like they're playing two-hand touch. You know, I grew up in New York City. We played to and touch on the basketball court in the winter. Well, that's like a, that's also like a, a drill that a lot of teams do called uh, 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 five man touch the line. Yeah. And Frazier draws the foul. The biggest lead in the game for Illinois was 19, but they've shown themselves to be a really good team. Let me ask you this about Duke. Where does the scoring come from down the line? I mean, you 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 know that Hurt is going to be dependent on to score. You assume Johnson, but where else for Coach K can they get some stability offensively? Well, they've got a number of players that can score. DJ Stewart can score. Breakfield can score. You know, even though he's gotten off to a, a really difficult start, Wendell Moore can score the ball. Like they've got a bunch of guys that can that can put the ball in the basket. The problem is they've not been in sync on the offensive end, and. You know, their, their offense put them in some bad spots defensively in this game, whether it's been questionable shots or, uh, you know, they had some turnovers that, that went to runouts on the other end, put their defense in a bad spot. But, you know, they're going to have to get some really good leadership from the point guard position from mm -hmm. Jordan Goldwire and uh, Jeremy Roach. But they're also going to have to to rely on each other more and run – better, more coherent half-court offense because they've got a number of guys that can score. I don't think that's a problem. The, they, they, don't have, they don't have one guy that you can throw the ball to and go get a bucket. Yeah. Like, you know, I think I mentioned before, that last year you could give it to Vernon Carey in the post and he's going to score. Or before the year before you had uh, R.J. Barrett and uh, you know, Cam Reddish or Zion Williams. You had three guys. You just give them the ball, they go get it. And then you also had an impeccable leader in Trey Jones. They don't really have that right now yet. Yep. Uh, it's going to have to be more collective. Yeah, Goner, Carey, Jones, and Cassius Stanley, those three guys all went in the second round. How about Illinois, by the way, tonight? Six players in double figures for Brad Underwood's team. They're, le Sumu, they're legit. Yeah, no doubt. Legit. Got it. Jumper is good. Eighteen for Io Dasumu. And Illinois hands Duke the Blue Devils their second home non-conference loss of the year. 83-68 is the 